You're watching Midwest Magnum. I'm Kurt. I'm Daryl. Welcome back. Today we've got the new Ruger SFAR 308, a small frame, semi-automatic. I love this thing. <laughs> oh, yes. Quick shout out to our friends at K-Tactical. They sent me this Kydex holster for my Glock 19X. Uh, really nice, and for heavy set guys like myself, pops out nice and easy, but then also locks up nice and secure. It is a fantastic holster. Thank you guys so much. You are not wrong. It's an awesome one. The Red Kydex from K-Tactical. As promised, this is my new Ruger SFAR 308. Ruger calls this a small frame auto loading rifle. That is nice. That's... I've been spending quite a bit of time uh, messing around with this gas system. I've tweaked the gas system to different settings to see if I can get at what point she'll quit working. I've been changing buffer weights. I know Ruger said, oh, it's proprietary. It ain't. Right now, I've currently got an H2 buffer in there, and it really seems to make a difference. Wow. What do you think? Yeah, that is, that is a big improvement. A ton yeah. less recoil. Yeah, she's ejecting wow. at around 3.30 now, so 4 o'clock, which is flawless. The new Ruger SFAR, or Small Frame Auto Loading Rifle, packs a 30 caliber punch into a compact small frame AR-15 size platform. It comes with a four position regulated gas block to help run reliably across a wide spectrum of 308 Winchester ammo. A two port boomer muzzle brake helps tame the forces of recoil and the rifle comes in two different options, sporting either a 16 or 20 inch barrel. According to Ruger, the SFAR utilizes superior materials and engineering building it bigger and stronger only where it needs to be. The Ruger SFAR has a caliber of 7.62 NATO 308 Winchester, overall capacity of 20 rounds with a barrel length at 16 or 20 inches. The overall length for the 16 inch barrel is 34 to 37 and a quarter inches and the overall length for the 20 inch barrel is 38 to 41 and a quarter inches. The overall height is 7.2 inches for both the 16 and 20 inch barrels and the weight is 6.8 pounds on the 16 inch barrel and 7.3 pounds on the 20 inch barrel. Our scoring system consists of three components, construct, performance, and maintenance, each having three additional subcomponents with each of these subcomponents evaluated at 33.3%. Scores are then tallied up and divided by three for an overall rating. Midwest Magnum considers any score above 85% to be a quality firearm. As you can see, the Ruger SFAR scored a 96% with an overall A rating. This, is, uh, this thing is a lot of fun. I really have enjoyed it. It's not the cheapest gun to shoot, especially when you're just knocking out rounds because it's a lot of fun to shoot. Yep. You'll suddenly realize you burned up through another 100 rounds. Like, I gets expensive with its 308, but yep. it's a lot of fun, and I don't have a regret buying it. It is. A, it's a real right. nice gun. Right. And some of the upgrades you've made on that are absolutely phenomenal. The first time, uh, we, we've gone out and shot it a couple times. Daryl has been out many more times than I have, but I've gone out a couple times with him, and each time we went out, it kept getting smoother and smoother. And to the point, the last time we went out, it felt like I was shooting an AR. Yeah. It, an it, AR-15. It, it felt like a 5.56 five, at that yeah. point. There's, there's just little tweaks you can do to improve this. Because I know one of the big questions people have been posting is, there are other small frame uh, attempts out there. There's some good stuff. There's some expensive stuff. They want, you know, durability. Is this thing going to hold up? You've taken a large caliber um, and you've kind of shoehorned it into a, a, an intermediate caliber sized firearm. And it does raise some questions because there is a whole lot going on with this gun when it does fire. <laughs> it's a lot well, of fun and, though. And some of the upgrades you've made to it are going to take some of that pounding off of it. Right. I mean. It said, you know, 
at, during your initial break in 60 rounds or so, you know, leave it on the number three setting. I'll show you how to adjust the gas, the gas settings. Set it, leave it on number three. Uh, I got exactly three rounds out of this thing before I said, uh-uh, not a chance. This thing was, it's, it, it was a little violent and the ejection was at about a one o'clock. So I immediately turned it down to number two, which it may, may really civilized the gun a lot yeah. more. And it really did help. But there's other things you can do to really, you know, tame this thing. And it really, the recoil level can really be diminished, making rapid follow-up shots really accurate. Yeah. Which, that's, that was my, my main goal, is the whole point of having something like this set up, is I set this up as a DMR, a, a designated marksman's rifle. This, the concept here is you can engage multiple targets at distance with with better knockdown power than you would be getting from that 5.56, five, even with the upgraded ammo, the 77 grain stuff that's now out there, this is still going to hit harder. But overall, it was pretty consistent with all the different oh, ammo. It, right? it, it didn't seem to notice. I, yeah. I, I would change from, you know, you know, old Tula to something, you know, Winchester I mean, I was mixing and matching just to see if I could get nope. it to choke, and I never cared. Nothing, yeah. the, only, the only malfunctions I've experienced are I've induced them, trying to run my gas low and keep lowering it and lowering it, see yep. how low I can take this thing. And I've been induced the only malfunctions. This thing, otherwise, if I hadn't been fooling around, flawless. Explain well, the gas system to them and how, what, what effect in changing the gas and right. why you would do that. Now, what, this is the 16-inch version, which has a mid-length gas system. It's easily adjustable. You adjust it from the ejection side. That's how you get your numbers. It has four settings. Zero would be no gas at all, which basically you've turned it into a single shot. And there are reason you would, you know, if you want to save your brass instead of watching them launch away. That's one example of why you'd use zero gas. The number one setting they're recommending for use with suppressors. Basically, I've tried to run this on number one. It won't, without a suppressor, it won't quite cycle consistently. I can get a couple of rounds and it'll choke again. So that's a no-go unless you put a suppressor on it. But the number two setting is basically the standard setting. Here is your gas port. On the 16 inch, they've got a cutout right here so you can reach in to adjust it. It's currently set on the number two setting. This is the included wrench to make the adjustments. That's how you adjust the gas system. But basically, once I made, set it on two, I could run any ammo through it. It didn't, it didn't notice the differences. It's, it's pretty consistent. Yep. The thing I have, I have seen already people posting is um, it's, as evidence that these are overgassed on that number three setting specifically is it's called case head swipe. What's happening is the gas is hitting so hard and so fast, the chamber, the, 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 the cartridge itself is being held against the chamber walls. As the bolt is, hit, the gas has hit the, you know, the bolt carrier assembly, she's starting to retract, the bolt is starting to rotate. Well, there's all this pressure still holding the brass on the chamber itself. It just makes these little tears, little sharp edges. And that's not a pressure issue with the cartridge itself. That is an over gas issue. Over pressure on your cartridge is going to look different on the head, the case head. So that was one of the things I, I, I've seen pictures and it's like, wow, that's definitely, yeah. that number three setting is like uh, insanely open. So yep. definitely two setting is, is going to be for the majority of people if you're running a suppressor yeah you'll be definitely losing one because i can almost get it to work with the number one setting so for somebody who right now who's who's looking at this and not having done a lot of research and considering an ar 15 versus an ar 10 what are the biggest differences between those two guns uh, the, the biggest thing we're looking at right here this is basically think ar 15 that's only been enhanced in certain areas just so it'll accommodate the, the, the 308 round. This is an AR-15 with that got some a steroid injection. As you can see from the uh, the in your lower, basically I've I've got an AR-15 CMC trigger in there using my KNS uh, anti rotation pins. Everything's normal right through there. Here's where you get into it again. The magwell is larger to accommodate the SR-25 mag. This is the Ruger SFAR bolt. Few people have complained they've had a lot of machining and tooling marks. Mine is glass smooth and flawless. As you can see, it, it's, it uses one screw to make up for the difference. You can see it looks a lot like an AR-15 up until you reach this point here, and then she gets beefier. Basically, it's when you look at it, unless you look, you, you didn't see that mag. Well, you think it is. Yeah, it's just another AR-15 five five yep. six. The bolt carry on a, a true AR-10 is just it's it's a 
big piece of work. It, mm -hmm. And that's there's a lot of moving parts with this. What they've done is they've scaled everything down. This is where one of the questions of durability is coming in. You know, did they figure out a way to make this thing taking that 308 recoil last? I, I will say for the record, um, and just because I'm thinking about it this very second, I always use the term fluff and buff. You've heard me say it. Yep. When we get a new gun, I want to do a fluff and buff. What that basically means is I go through these guns. I check everything. I did find some QC issues on this one. But initially, when it ships, they have a, a QD mount back here. And the QD mount's plastic, which is number one is a no-go for me. I, want, I, I don't want plastic QD anything. But what I found was the uh, number one, when I pulled it all apart, the uh, the buffer tube you remember as we build an ar you're spiraling it in to catch the buffer uh, retaining pin mm -hmm. that the lip of the buffer tube catches that this one was barely caught i was able to i took it all apart i was able to get another full turn under this recoil I, what would I, I would have anticipated that the uh, the spring and the uh, the buffer retaining pin would have ended up in fire control with a quickness locking this thing right up, yep. which wouldn't be good. The other thing I found was castle nut was only hand tight. I was able to spin it off with my hands. What I ended up doing was I used a bed block, Magpul bed block, set up for an AR-15. Then I used a micro microfiber cloth to, to make up the difference for the new mag, so it would still lock it right into place. I was able to get proper torque on this using a proper uh, armorer's wrench, a Magpul armorer's wrench. So that took, you know, I've taken care of that. I've, you know, everything's been staked. They, that's the reason that some people have said, why isn't it staked? It's because they haven't touched the gun yet. That's yeah. plastic. You can't stake it. Nope. So this is now staked correctly. It's fun with this we gun. had a great time shooting this gun and yeah. it really does. I mean, it, it does now feel like you're shooting an AR-15. Yeah. It yeah. is just it was well, so smooth towards the end there and sure. accurate. These four targets were all fired using the H buffer at that point. As I'm firing, I'm maintaining what is this rifle all about? That's you know the print you know, that's principle. It's 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 philosophy of use. This is a multiple target, longer range weapon. So I'm trying to this is not one of my bolt guns, so I'm not firing and waiting for optimum wind again. I, it's a case of I'm firing this thing with a cadence to it. The moment my sights have aligned, I fire again. And I'm, this wasn't too bad. This I know I shoot better, and I know part of this is me, simply because I'm not maintaining a good uh, a cheek well position. But what I found is, you know, from PMC, full metal jacket, 147 grains, five rounds at 100 yards. My standby Tula, full metal jacket, 150 grain, five rounds at 100 yards. My Winchester M80, 149 grain full metal jacket, 100 yards, five rounds again. Uh, pretty much a consistency across all of us, even with, I broke out some of my, my hunting ammo, which this is all factory stuff we're working with. The Winchester Deer Season XP, 150 grain, again, a very, very similar. It's putting all of its rounds right where it needs to put them at this, at this uh, weight of bullet. Now, what I did is after I put in the H2 buffer and I started shooting again, I said, wow, that recoil is even lower. I went ahead and put a target out at 200 yards and I fired 15 rounds of Tula figuring, okay, this is the worst case scenario. I'm at 200 rounds. I'm using Tula and I'm going to force 15 rounds through the gun now. And if that was a bolt gun, I would be disappointed with that, that grouping. I would be upset. But with this thing firing a cadence, a bang, bang. Bang, the moment your, your, my, my optic is back, I've aligned my sight again, I fire. And it, this is the whole principle behind this rifle. I was like, that's not too bad. I think with a little practice, because next time I'm going to take it out to 300 and I'm going to continue to work with this. I think my scope may need a slight tweaking when I get to 300. But otherwise, when I looked at the target, my instant reaction was, hey, that, that sucks. Then I was like, no, you're not shooting a bolt gun right now. This has got a different principle behind it. And I started to think about it. I was like, that isn't too bad for 200 yards. The gun itself is fantastic. I mean, basically, most parts are interchangeable with an AR-15. Mm -hmm. I mean, as an example, and we'll get into this, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I have an H2 buffer in this. Now, Ruger ships this thing with a carbine weight buffer. Standard, you know, That's why you're junk. shooting one o'clock. <laughs> junk. I mean, what, how many times have I said in our videos, these are disposable. They're yeah. only used because they're cheap and they're junk and I always throw them away. Well, I've, I only kept it long enough to show you that the, the, they're exactly the same. This is the original buffer from the SFAR. These are three ounce. 
We got the H I experimented with the H buffer, and this is a spare H2. I found the H2 was giving me my best ejection. One of the questions a lot of people are posting online is, are the buffer tubes the same? This is your standard carbine buffer tube, AR-15. This is the buffer tube on the SFAR. You can see they are different. The buffer tube may be longer, but the buffers are still the same. And so I experimented with H buffers, H2 buffers. And when you get the proper buffering, suddenly my ejection is now four o'clock. And this recoil is really down to nothing. I had set up two different targets on the 50 yard range. So I had a 50 yard for the scope and I had one really close. So I was transitioning between the two and I was running my timer, timing how fast I could get hits from scope back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I was, I mean, I was hitting, I was emptying mags just that fast. It just, the recoil is so light now. It is just, you don't even realize it's a 308. I love the, the trigger on that too is real nice. Yeah. I mean, everything about that gun is just awesome. Yeah. What, what the Ruger ships this was with a four and a half pound two stage trigger. Now that trigger was surprisingly nice. That's one of the better triggers I've ever felt on an AR pattern rifle. I was like, that's really nice. But you know me, my love of really light triggers. So I put in a CMC uh, two point, you know, two and a half pound single stage. When I tested it right out of the box, it was about three pounds, 10 ounces, which is under what they're saying already. And I'm like, that's not bad. And then I thought, well, I got to you know, I've had a spare CMC. So I dropped that in there, which all this stuff fits. It's like I said, it's just a, basically an AR that's only been scaled up in a few spots. I guess all in all, I am very, very pleased with this purchase. I'm a huge fan of 308. I would anticipate this will probably come out in a, in a 6.5 for all the uh, microbrew boys. They'll be having fun with that one then. This, I really have always been a fan of 308. I just was never a terrible fan of AR-10s. They just seemed so chonky for what you got out of them. Yeah. I preferred bolt guns at that point. This thing kind of changed my perspective on running a gun with a 308 out there, which I absolutely love it. Like I, like I said, the scope, is, what you're seeing right now may not stay that way. The more time I spend with this, I'll figure out how, how I want to do it. But this is how it's been set up initially. And I'm really enjoying the heck out of it. I think Ruger definitely is going to have a winner on their hands. The durability, the longevity of this gun, I'm going to find out. I just, I have, as long as I can afford to keep shooting, <laughs> I'll see if I can break it. I'm going to, I'm going to hope I never do. But I'm trying to do everything I can to, you know, give it as longest life as possible. I think a lot of the upgrades you've made on that are going to take yeah. a lot of the beat out of it. So well, I think that I think it'll I, last. Sure, I know some people might say, "Oh, hey, you changed a part that Ruger says don't change." Well, it's a it's a standard buffer. Yeah, and I I found it works a lot better. I don't know if they make changes over the course of time to the gas system itself. This is what I've got, and I really am not not have no regret buying this. I really enjoy this rifle. I can't wait for Christmas. <laughs> we'll see. You've got to be good, though. Oh, shoot. Thanks for watching Midwest Magnum. Hit the alert button, hit the like button, and make sure to subscribe. Uh, we have a lot of viewers that come onto our channel every day with a lower percentage of subscribers. So do us a favor, help us keep this going by subscribing to our channel so we can bring more videos to you like this every week. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the alerts so that you don't miss any of our future videos. And by the way, that logo right there, you can click that to subscribe. So show us how good your aim is. That logo right there, that one. Go ahead, click it.